I have always loved the combination of technology and sport. It probably stems from Christmas 1981 and my acquisition of this. That is a Grandstand 6000. <laughs> Hours of fun. And if you're thinking, what the hell is that thing? Has your PS5 got an onboard score counter? No, I didn't think so. Today's video is three bits of sports tech that I used recently on a trail run but work equally as well if I'm out on the bike or if I'm in here Zwifting or even at the gym on the kayak on the paddleboard hiking racing training the list goes on and most importantly make me faster I think the trail run was on tricky off-road ground but I managed to run it faster than about 99% of my on-road training runs all year and way faster than the last timed road 10k run I'd done back in March before lockdown so at the very least they give me a boost first up is this the power dot 99% of the time when I buy something I research it so extensively that by the time it actually arrives it's also an anti-climax even if it's as good as I hoped because I kind of expect it to be after all that checking with this that was not the case this was an absolute gamble in fact electrocuting myself and getting the benefits that they suggested that would bring did seem pretty dubious I got this after getting cramp in my calves and my quads repeatedly after long endurance events. And by that I mean things taking three, four hours plus. So marathons, ultra marathons, long mountain trail runs, stuff of that nature. Oddly, I'd be fine during the event, but afterwards, in the evening afterwards, or even worse, in the night afterwards, I'd get cramp that would set in, and during the night was the worst, it would wake me up literally screaming in pain. It was horrible. And I had tried everything i had tried electrolytes i had tried hydrating better i had tried magnesium before bed i tried foam rolling and foam rolling really was the only thing that made a real difference although it didn't solve it and to be honest extensive foam rolling in the evening after i'd just done a long endurance event and traveled back from wherever that was that wasn't really what i wanted to be doing if i could avoid it so i saw the power dot advertised and i saw how much it was over 300 pound for the duo unit with the two modules within it and I ran it past Jenna and said, look, it's over 300 quid, but it might help with a cramp in the night. She said, do not dare spend that much money on something so ridiculous. That night, I woke up screaming, thrashing about in the bed at three o'clock in the morning, probably elbowed her in the face. She said, buy that fucking thing right now. So it arrived and I've used it for recovery ever since. It's incredibly simple to use. You follow the app and place the pads where it says to do so on the body. You then hook them up to the unit which connects to your phone by Bluetooth. You hit go and done. That's it. It then supplies electrical signals to the muscle groups causing contractions at varying rates whether you're looking for recovery or endurance or strength etc. I can't remember what the event was that I first used it after but I can remember being sat on a sofa in there watching TV hooked up to it thinking this beats foam rolling but cannot possibly be doing me any good. I've just thrown this money down the bin uh, sat next to Jenna telling her yes it's amazing darling what an excellent purchase. I did it on my quads, I did it on my calves, I went to bed and I woke up the next morning A having not been woken up in the middle of the night screaming in pain and B even more impressively just felt good. Normally the day after something like a, a marathon or an ultra or anything like that my legs will feel stiff certainly when I first get out of bed they will feel like they had done work the day before that wasn't what they felt like at all in fact i can recall it was a monday which is a rest day for me i normally do nothing on mondays i went for a 5k run i just felt so fresh so how do they make me go faster on the trail run well i'd never used them for anything other than recovery i'd say not use them for warm-up but the trail run was taking place on a very cold morning it was just above freezing as i recall and there was no warm-up available because of the covid restrictions you pretty much had to stay in your car you then got called to the starting pen just before your time and off you went and you ran it was a kind of a time trial basis with people going off staggered starts so no warm-up available so i sat in the car plugged into the power dot ran it on a warm-up program before i went and ran now it is hard to say whether it had a huge impact on me or whether there were other factors at play but what I do know is that 
on a freezing cold morning, I went off on a tough, tricky off-road course and ran a sub four minute first kilometer and felt fine. Now that isn't staggeringly fast, but for me to enter into a 10K trail race under four minutes for the first kilometer and feel good is quick. At the end of it, I, I was double checking my watch and thinking I'd, I'd surprised at how fast I was moving and I felt good the whole way through. I just felt, I felt like I'd already run a couple of kilometers. That's the best way of describing it. I normally get to a situation on a 10K where two, maybe three K in, I suddenly find that I'm settling into it a bit more. Everything feels a bit loosened up. I literally felt like that from the off. Is it all a placebo effect? Well, A, I don't think so. Going off too fast in cold conditions would normally cause problems later on. Stiffness and discomfort, it, it's quite hard for a placebo effect to mask that. And B, I don't really care. I came third in that race out of a couple of hundred runners at 220 pounds. That is an oddity. So if a placebo effect can give me a real trophy, I'll take that placebo all day long. As a result, I've used them for warm up loads of times since, and it is just as simple as doing your recovery sat on the sofa. Warming up with these, sat in the car, sat in here before I go on the bike, incredibly straightforward. And if something is straightforward, you're more likely to do it. Now, this isn't a video describing in detail how the bits of tech I have work, or even how I specifically use them. It's more about saying, look, I've got these, I like them, you might wanna check them out. Having said that, in regard to these, I do get asked the same questions over and over. So I jotted them down and let me just run through those. The first one that everybody says, is it painful? No, it starts off at level zero on any program you're using. You can't feel a zero, obviously, because it's zero. And you then increase it gently until you can feel it. First, you'll notice a tingle and then you'll feel the muscle, wherever the muscle is, contracting, the same as if you contracted it yourself. At some point, if you were to increase the level right the way to the top, I imagine it would become uncomfortable. But equally, if you smash your head on a desk repeatedly, that would hurt too. So don't do either of those things. How high should you set it? I set it so that it is on the edge of uncomfortable. I then let it run for a few minutes and very quickly you find that that discomfort, if there is any at all, dissipates and you can go a little bit higher. It's very like sports massage in that sense. You get used to the sensation, your muscles relax, and you can push a bit more. Are the cheap ones you can get just as good? No idea. I do know that with massage guns, for example, I have bought expensive ones and cheap ones, and the cheap ones have been just as good, and I wondered why I bothered wasting my money on the expensive ones. With this, I'm not so sure. I don't fancy electrocuting myself with something cheap and cheerful. <laughs> Uh, if you do, have a try, put in the comments how it goes. Don't wear anything flammable. Why there are a million settings on the app and is that overkill? I don't know, and yeah, possibly. The two settings I always use are the I'm really tired, recover me setting, and the I'm about to do something, warm me up setting. That's it. There are lots of others on there for strength and conditioning and endurance. Do they work? Are they beneficial? No idea, have a play with it. There is a distinct difference between the two I use. The recovery setting causes rapid pulsing contractions that feel like a sports massage is probably the best description. It feels like it's flushing the muscle out. The warm-up setting is a contraction that is held for a duration and then released, held and released, a bit like isometric exercise. Bottom line, I like it a lot. Next, Garmin Fenix 6X, X4 Extra Big. I have done whole videos on this watch. It is probably my most preferred piece of fitness equipment. Forget tech, fitness equipment in general. If I was going to a race and had to forget something, I'd forget my shoes before I forgot this. Uh, I can run barefoot. My wrist is never nude. It's gotta be a better way to say that. And despite what I read online all the time, it's not just for hardcore athletes. Jenna is a very casual jogger. She's running a few times a week, four, five, six K. She was running with an Apple watch, constantly swiping at it with sweaty fingers, the thing not working to the commands she's trying to give it. It looked like she was on a mission for a rampant Tinder hookup more than the lap time. Hated it. I got her the Fenix 6S, S4 small probably and she is now a very happy jogger. The beauty of it is that you can set it when you're running, for example, to display nothing other than one metric, the time elapsed, for example. Equally, 
you can have it displaying six or seven bits of data on a screen, seven or eight different screens available, as much information as you could possibly want. It doesn't matter whether you are running one hour park runs or eight hour Ironmans, the watch can be tweaked to suit you perfectly. And why did it specifically make me or help me go fast on that trail run? Two things. First of all, the stuff it does every time I run. How long have I been going? How far have I gone? What is my current lap pace for this kilometer? What's my current pace for the run as a whole? What's my heart rate doing? What's my cadence up to? And because I use it all the time, I know exactly what that information means to me. I know if it means that I am slacking or if I'm pushing too hard and need to make adjustments. I'm reasonably good at judging how quickly I'm going. But even so, there have still been many times where I've gone out and I've been running and thinking I'm pushing on hard. I'll check the watch and think, apparently I'm not. Let's get a move on here. And vice versa. I've often gone out, thought I was doing normal sort of pace, check my watch, going far too hard, heart rate rising, and I can check myself, slow back down a bit with a better understanding of exactly what's going on. So it does all that. But drop a GPX route into its map settings and it is so much more again, especially on trail runs getting off road. Okay, we're in the valley between the two climbs because um, my watch says so and there's a ton of water over there. Many races that you'll go along to will allow you to have the GPX route of where you're going to run in advance. The race that I did recently did exactly that. So I downloaded it onto the watch, a matter of seconds, and before I set off, I tell the watch, this is the course we're gonna be running today. The watch now knows exactly how far I've got to go, it knows how far I've gone, it knows what climbs are coming up because it can monitor and measure the elevation. If I'm on a climb, it will tell me how much longer there is of that climb left. Am I near the top? Are there more climbs to come? I've said it before, it is best described as having a pit crew telling you what is going on in your race with information that you wouldn't otherwise have available to you. There are at least two or three climbs on that race where I was able to check my watch, see that I was over halfway up the climb, see that it leveled off after that, check my heart rate, knew that I was doing okay, and I could push on. I'd run up the hill, no visual indicator as to where the top of the hill was. I'd be running through a wood, just trees everywhere. But I could check my watch and I knew exactly where the top was, how hard to push, when it was coming up. I was just, simply better informed than everybody else around me who was just mumbling and grumbling about where's the bloody top. There is no question whatsoever, it is my favorite piece of gear. Motivation, information, clarification, all the Asians. It even gets a free pass on my raw runs. Those are days where I just grab the dog and we go off trail running off road with no real idea where we're going, no training specific objective in mind, we're simply running outdoors, man, beast, wilderness, as one, chanting, we don't chant, you get the idea though, it is a raw run, nothing fancy going on, we're not running with any music, there's no GoPros taken for filming, it's just us, no outside influences, but the watch gets to come. Because it's not really about outside influences, it's measuring me, how fast am I going, how fast is my heartbeat going, how fast and my legs going over. It's information that, in an ideal world, my brain would be capable of monitoring and gauging accurately, but it simply can't. It's just telling me what am I doing. And even though I've got a Garmin Edge on the bicycles, I still take this with me because it's just as happy to hook up to the power meter on those and give me those metrics as well. Basically, if I'm doing something physical, I'm out and about, I've got the watch with me. And lastly, my aftershocks bone conducting headphones what are they they are for transferring the sound of typically your music through the bone in your jaw straight to your brain rather than the traditional method of sound getting to your brain uh, through the hole in the side of your head known in fancy terminology as your ear these have gone from something that i forgot i even owned to pretty game changing for all of my recent uh, physical activities. So I owned the version they made before these and last summer I replaced them with these ones. In fact, I did a video on it. In summary, these ones are better than the previous ones. I got them because I used to run with music all the time. In fact, I was dependent on music is the best way to describe it. 
And when I started doing some 10K races, I discovered that some of those races said no earphones, but they did allow bone conducting earphones. I then discovered that not all races were quite so lenient and still some of them said no earphones of any type. And certainly the obstacle course races I did definitely wouldn't allow them. So I had to get used to running at least some of the time without earphones. And I thought the best way of doing that was just to cut them out completely and get over my dependency on music. And before I knew it, I'd done that. I simply became someone that did not run with music. And side point slightly, but actually that's not a bad thing to become. If you are someone, and I hear many people say it, who can't run without music, yes you can, try not doing it all the time at least. There are enough hurdles between anyone's where they are now and where they want to be that you don't need to make ones up out of nothing. You don't need to run with music and you shouldn't have to run with music. And if you ever do a race, lots of them won't let you run with music. So get used to not running with music. I stuck them in the drawer and forgot about them. Then a couple of months ago, my brother asked me if I still had them because he'd been reading about them and wanted to get some, wanted to try them out first. I said, yeah, I've got them, have a go if you like. He then gave them back a couple of weeks later and said, they're amazing, he's gonna go and get himself some immediately. I thought, really? I don't remember them being that good, to be honest. And I had a trail run coming up. And there is absolutely no question whatsoever that being able to have the Rocky IV soundtrack pumped literally straight into my skull <laughs> made me go faster. Now, whether Rocky IV will work specifically for you depends on many variables. As a quick test, if you can go and use a treadmill with an incline feature, and not immediately believe that everyone in that gym thinks you look exactly like this. <laughs> then you might have different musical tastes. For me, they were absolutely perfect. They're completely unobtrusive to your ears. I could hear the marshals, I could hear other runners. That's why race directors like you using these if you're gonna use something. The sound quality for exercise was fine. They are not gonna be as good as the best in-ear earphones. But to be honest, if you're jogging down the road and you're worried about the bass and the treble levels from your earphones, you might as well worry about your sports gel and whether it's got enough, I don't know, fruity undertones of oak and cedar, get a grip. And they work perfectly with Siri. So my phone stayed in my little belt bag that I use. I didn't have to take it out to change tracks or to pause or to play again. I simply spoke out loud. I was hooked on listening to music as I exercise and I've used them loads ever since. In fact, I've done pretty much all of my outdoor runs going to the gym when it was open, using these. I've even used them in here on the bike, especially if it's late at night or early in the morning. I don't want music playing loudly in here. They've been absolutely perfect. In fact, the only problem with them is that I've almost become dependent upon music for exercise again. And so when I start doing proper races, I'm gonna to need to sort of wean myself off of them again. That is a problem though for another day. And lastly, being a little bit boring, I think it's a safer way to run, a safer thing to wear when you're running than earphones, regular earphones. I'm very aware when I go out running that I'm a large man running with a dog at reasonable speed. When I come up on people from behind, especially women, I'm very courteous of the space that they might want and not to encroach upon that. But sometimes with narrow footpaths and so on, it's, it's quite hard to avoid that. I'll try and make myself heard as I approach. I take louder footsteps even, or talk to the dog. I like to think that if the first thing they know is that someone's talking to their dog about their current lap time, they might regard that as less threatening but often I will finally get next to the person I'm running past and it will become evident that they had earphones in and couldn't hear me at all. The dog will pass them, they'll be slightly startled, I'll then come past and they'll be very startled. Now, if you can run and have someone approach you from behind out of the blue, much, much larger than you, and be completely unfazed, more power to you, that's brilliant. I have no idea what that experience is like until, I don't know, Shaquille O'Neal moves in next door and starts banging out 16 minute 5Ks I'm not gonna know what it's like, but I do realize that enough people jump dramatically to one side when they suddenly see me and squeal in fear, and the women as well, that it is not well liked. So don't block your ears up when you are out and about, would be my suggestion. Um, nobody wants to be upsetting anybody. Uh, if it were, as well, it is sometimes, my kids out running, I tell them, you've only got a few senses as it is. Don't block the ones you've got. Okay, as I said earlier on, this video is not to describe in detail how these things work or how I use them, but I'm happy to answer any questions. So stick them in the comments below. What it is designed to do is to say, 
look, I use these things, and I'm pretty sure that they contribute to my performance. In fact, I go so far as to say I'm 99% sure they enhance my performance. Bottom line, I love a gadget. I love a fitness gadget. I have bought many. If I've got to grab three to go off and race somewhere, I'm taking these three. Like and subscribe, please. And if you are the maker of any of the gadgets featured in today's video and want to send me freebies, please do so. They'll be happily received. Don't worry that I've already got them. I can always use spares. Unless you happen to make this, in which case don't bother. One of those is enough. If I really need it, I can go and find it. Probably in my mum's loft somewhere in a box underneath my He-Man characters.